uh, welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council meeting. It is March the 4th, and Mr. or Council Member Bill Shacklett has our prayer, and then I'm <clears> going to introduce, excuse me, our pledge and prayer, and I'm going to introduce someone to do our pledge. That, thank you, Mayor. I want to introduce a f face uh, that's going to be familiar around our community, uh, our new director of schools, soon to be Dr. Trey Duke. Uh, and he's, this is his first week on the job, and I thought I'd, he'd come in and tell us a little bit about how things are going and, and then uh, do our opening prayer. All right, Trey. thank you. Thank you, Councilman Shackley. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. We are excited. Started on the job Monday. We've had a very exciting week, a very busy week. I've enjoyed meeting the staff, getting to know some of the central office team as we work together. I've had a great relationship with the central office and with our school principals my last two years as principal of Salem, and I'm really looking forward to continuing that good work. I want to thank Mr. Tyndall. He has graciously uh, given me access and, and talk. We've met with his staff a couple times, and we're looking forward to that great relationship continuing. So he's been very helpful during this transition, and we continue uh, to look to that great partnership together. Thank you, Trey. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to come together to work for the betterment of our community. We continue to ask that you will guide us, that you will give us the wisdom we need to make Murfreesboro the great city it can be. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 It's my pleasure tonight. I want to introduce um, a gentleman who's working on his citizenship in the community. He's with Troop 398 out of St. Mark's. He's also here with his dad, Fred, tonight, but Nathan Daniel is going to uh, handle our Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, I want to first, we, we don't have a ceremonial item, but um, I want to apologize. Not that y'all need to know this, but I got dressed in my Jeep tonight because I was on my way back from Cookville where um, the Providence Christian Academy, based in Murfreesboro, they're playing in the state championship tonight, and they won their semifinal game, and they are playing Saturday at 1 o'clock against... Webb uh, out of Bell Buckle for the state championship. So I want to congratulate them on their um, on their victory and the the Lady Lions, and then also apologize that I'm not wearing a tie tonight because I forgot it. So <laughs> I will tell you I do have pants on up underneath this thing. So uh, that is probably lucky for everyone. So all right, we're now going to move to our we're now going to move to our consent agenda. I do have one uh, item, item 6, the water res re resource recovery facility roof resources is going to be pulled down to item 13 under uh, on motion. So you have five items that are on your consent agenda. So move. Second. second. Motion and a double second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. And I will remind um, Ms. Scales Harris, it's good to have you, but pursuant to the governor's executive order, we still are operating <clears> under <throat> his COVID protocol where we can conduct uh, meetings virtually for anyone who is unable to attend the meeting. So, Ms. Scales Harris, can you hear us okay? Yes, sir, but I want to know if you have pants on. She do you have pants on? Yes, I do. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can't imagine how red my face is right now. So uh, I want to. Uh, the uh, we have minutes next. The approval of city council minutes from August the twelfth, twenty twenty, to October twenty second, twenty twenty. Are there any additions or deletions to the minutes? I move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Kills Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right, we'll move into um, land use matters under new business. We have a plan of service uh, and annexation for property located along Gresham Lane, and this is the planning department. Mr. Blomley? Thank you, Mayor McFarland, and good evening, Mayor McFarland and members of council. Um, our one item tonight is for an annexation and plan of services located along the west side of Gresham Lane. It's the area colored in blue on the map before you. It's about 5.5 acres. 
there's one existing single family home on the property and the balance of the property is the um, stormwater management area for the Glendale subdivision, which is a county subdivision west of Gresham Lane. Um, this property is sandwiched in between uh, uh, areas of the city limits. If I could zoom out from this map right now, you would see that, that it's, even <clears throat> though it's in the county for all intents and purposes, it is a part of the city, just not in our political boundaries. The, Mr. Alcorn of Alcorn Properties has requested annexation of this 5.5 acres. The right-of-way of Gresham Lane in front of the subject property is already inside the city limits. Mr. Alcorn's intent is to divide the property into seven lots, so that would be one uh, lot for the existing home on the property and seven additional lots. Uh, he has no simultaneous zoning request on the property, so the property, if annexed, would come in with an RS-15 zoning classification because it's zoned residential in the county. Um, those of you who are at Planning Commission may remember that there was discussion of a restrictive covenant on the property that prohibited its subdivision as a part of the Glendale subdivision. Mr. Alcorn has gotten the requisite number of signatures to divide the property um, and our legal department has vetted the documents on that and agrees that, that uh, he is now able to divide the property if he, if he annexes the property. <clears throat> Um, the uh, benefits to the city for the annexation of this property, aside from the potential construction of single-family homes on the property, is that since Gresham Lane is a substandard street, Mr. Alcorn would be able to would be required to participate in some form or fashion in improvements to Gresham Lane, whether that's paying fees in lieu of construction or some type of uh, uh, improvements to the roadway. Uh, also, the existing uh, uh, stormwater management area for the Glendale subdivision is is uh, constructed with a little bit less formally than we would construct stormwater management areas now. It simply overtops into the Gresham Lane system. Uh, if they if they were to annex and develop this property, they would have a, form, a formal outlet structure to help control uh, when water would be released from that from that pond. The plan of services included in your agenda materials indicates that it would be relatively easy to affect this annexation um, as the property directly across the street is already in the city limits. So our, our rolling services are already in, in the subject area. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this matter on January the 6th and voted to recommend its approval to the City Council. Mr. Kevin Atwood, representing Mr. Alcorn, whose son also has a basketball game today and, and couldn't be here. Mr. Atwood is representing Mr. Alcorn, as well as their engineer, Mr. Nathan Melson, if you have any questions regarding the, the drainage and how that will be worked out. Yeah, and I wanted to make that comment that Mr. Alcorn, I think, called all the council members and his son made it to the middle school championship game tonight. And obviously he's doing what he should be to be watching his son play ball. So I wanted to make sure that everyone know, knew that he's not at the public hearing for that reason. All right, any questions on this? Um, plan of services and annexation application. All right, seeing no questions, we need to conduct a public hearing. Uh, if anyone's wishing to speak for or against this, we're gonna ask you to come to the podium. If you'll state your name and address, uh, you'll have three minutes if you're representing an individual, five minutes if you're representing a group. If you'll keep all questions directed to the council, we'll get those questions answered at the end of the public hearing. Uh, with that, anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider resolution 21R PS01, and this is the plan of services. Move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Now we'll now consider resolution 21RA801 for the annexation. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. I hope uh, Mr. Alcorn had a good outcome tonight. We'll move to item 9 through 13, uh, better known as the Darren Gore Show, as we go through these next five items, starting with approval of the new Master Services Agreement for Water Resources. 
Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Uh, since I have the floor for a little period of time, I figured I would go through a few extra items here just to kind of uh, ex explain to you all what the Water Resources has been doing the last couple of months. Uh, it won't take over 30 minutes. <coughs> just, just kidding. Uh, so the first item, I do want to kind of show with our the, the master services agreement with our rehabil uh, sewer rehabilitation master services agreement, how this kind of fits into the overall puzzle of, of what we present to TDEC and the state of Tennessee. We really started a, a pretty in-depth sanitary sewer rehab program in 2007. I'm not going to go through all these other items, but uh, you can see just starting back in 2000 with the largest, ten we have the largest reuse system in the state of Tennessee all the way to 2019 when we just completed our sanitary sewer allocation ordinance. All of these elements I present to TDEC to demonstrate that we are doing everything in our power to protect <clears throat> the water resources of our great city. So again, 2000, the, the, what I'm here talking to tonight is kind of that 2007 piece. We've been working on this for a good 12 years. So it just kind of maybe gives you, gives you the, the, the request I'm bringing forward in the proper context. So what we do about every you know, 18 months to 24 months, we have a, another large sanitary sewer rehab design. It's very sporadic across the city. We do a lot of, uh, it's called uh, uh, tracing, flood tra or, 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 or tracing of the water going up the uh, uh, sewer system to find out where we have backups, where we have uh, kind of extraneous water getting into the system, whether that water comes from the groundwater or through surface water, through rainstorm events and flooding events. We don't want that kind of water to get into our sanitary sewer system. So we uh, ask, uh, it has been historically SNME. Uh, today, today they are, their business unit is actually leaving SNME and have joined LGA Engineering. So we're getting a new master services agreement with LGA Engineering, but it's the project managers and all the folks that have been doing this for us are the same group that's been doing it for years. So we've got four tasks. Uh, they do equal a substantial amount of $439,500. The design is 132,000. Contract or construction admin is 95,000. We do have a resident project representative that spends that 18 to 24 months on the ground, actually helping our inspectors inspect, because uh, this group, the, the contractor that gets this uh, award, is awarded this contract, typically can have four or five crews working at the same time across the city, and a, a, a kind of a, a little bit of a contingent, $7,500 for surveying. Um, so this is just kind of a plan sheet. It shows you we go in, we repair a uh, main line. We can do that through an in-place liner. We can do that with a dig and replace. We do replace laterals up, to, up through people's homes. We found that uh, private laterals do have a lot of infiltration and inflow of, of groundwater and stormwater. Uh, so this next graphic that I'm gonna show you kind of, again, is, is maybe a KPI or key performance indicator of how we've performed um, the downward trend is a good trend. Uh, what we do is we look at that infiltration inflow component and we, we have a ratio with how much rain that we've had this year. So the lower the number is, that means the less infiltration inflow compared to the rainfall that we had that year. So I take these kind of charts and this is again, I go to TDEC and say, before they, whenever we go to ask for an expansion, we need more capacity or we need more, uh, you know, more flow rate through a pump station or more flow rate, flow rate through our water resource recovery facility, their first question is, what are you doing to keep water out of your system? So that's, that's when I show them these kind of charts and I show them the amount of money. We spend somewhere around $2 million annually to repair, replace, or rehab our sanitary sewer system. So it's an asset management function and uh, it's just something that it's job security, let me tell you, because that, that, that sanitary sewer system is going to constantly degrade and uh, we're going to have to constantly repair it. So again, a little, little long-winded there, but I wanted to kind of give you the, the overall picture. So we would request uh, your approval for the uh, master services agreement with LGA Engineering and a task order uh, for the 2021-2022 sanitary sewer rehab contract in the amount of the 400 and $432,000, $439,500. Any questions for Mr. Gore? 
Mr. Gore, I know you've been working on this. You know, I, I know for 15 years since I've been here when we had all of this talk about infiltration in the sewer system. And right. so um, the, the work that your team is doing is, is phenomenal on getting that number down. I mean, we've almost in, decreased it by half right. um, over the last, last 15 years. So thank you. Uh, which in turn goes to capacity and a lot of the things that we've been we've been talking about exactly uh, again the state wants to see us doing it and we've done this voluntarily most folks that have that go to the level of effort that we've we go to they've been mandated they've got a consent decree or they've uh, an administrative order against them that said they have to go do this so I'm very proud of the fact that the council the water resources board has supported this effort as really a voluntary, a, volu a voluntary effort, and that goes a big way. That, that really demonstrates a lot of goodwill when you when you're talking to the regulators. Any questions? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll now move, uh, move to chemical bid extensions for the fiscal year 22. So this is, is somewhat of a, a standard uh, contract extension that we have every year. We have a, we do the bids about once every four years. We have a three year. Uh, it can be extended annually for up to three years. I did want to kind of show a picture of our Chlortec bleach generation, uh, generator cells. We used to actually have to haul in bleach, which is a disinfectant for our water. These are on-site bleach generators. You take salt and you take power and you can actually create bleach. And we off-gas hydrogen gas. So there's, if you ever want to do a little Hindenburg experiment, we've got some hydrogen gas exhausted out at the plant. So anyway, uh, we don't have to pay for this anymore. We, 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 we basically do it on, on site. These other uh, chemicals, we do have to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, contract out. Uh, you can see the different chemicals there and the different vendors and the unit prices. Uh, it is about uh, $450,000 annually, but it's to, to uh, treat our drinking water. So we would ask for your approval for these contract extensions <clears throat> and uh, answer any questions. Any questions? You know, we try to uh, pronounce a couple of them. I, I thought for a second it said hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> we're, 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 getting, we're getting, we're getting uh, proactive. Mo mo motion, motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion. Hydroxychloride, by the way. Then a second. Second. Mr. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. Uh, we will move to approval of granular activated carbon bid. Uh, so again, this is a, this is an annual. We have four. Uh, we call them GAC granular activated carbon contacting beds. They're not really filters. It's almost like a charcoal filter. We take uh, the four. These used to be the sand filter beds that we we treated the water through. When we moved back in 2008 to a membrane filtration, uh, if you know like the spaghetti noodles membranes that we use, we converted the sand filters to these uh, GAC contactors. What they do, uh, we change one out per year, so they're on a four-year rotation of being replaced with the, uh, the media, and that's a little bit of a picture of, of what the media looks like. And uh, this takes out any taste and odor issues. I know sometimes if you, not, not throwing another utility under the bus, but when it gets really, really dry and hot in the middle of the summer, there may be certain uh, taste and odor issues with a certain water supplier. We never have those because of these uh, GAC contacting beds. It really does. It's, it does some, some treatment uh, with trihalomethanes and some haloacetic acids, which is, takes that out, but it also really helps with taste and odor. So we would ask for the, uh, the 122,840 low bid from Calgon uh, Carbon Corporation to re replace one of our GAC contactor beds. Move for approval. Motion and second. Oh, I need a second. Sorry. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills-Harris. 
Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. And then uh, item 12 for the purchase of reclaimed water meters. Yes, yeah, so I've got a picture up here of a medical center parkway and you can maybe see these the, the light purple squares with the M on them. Those are the irrigation meters that we have all along the median of medical center parkway from Thompson Lane all the way out to Broad Street. Um, there's 110 of these. They're, they're on the old system. They are not uh, AMI, which is the automated meter reading infrastructure, which reads wirelessly. Uh, we, for safety reasons and just for uh, getting the, these compatible with our other uh, AMI reading system, our telemetry system, uh, we would like to replace these with new meters in the amount of uh, $78,364. There's, there's two, there's actually, we took two, two bids. One was for the smaller meters, five eighths and one inch. And then there was one and a half up to uh, eight inch uh, bid. So we've got Badger meters with the smaller meters and Sitco water with the larger uh, meter replacements. So we would ask for, this has been budgeted uh, in our, in our uh, rate funded budget. So we would ask for your approval on that. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Mr. Gore, I mean, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. We'll move to item. Mayor, can I have one other? Sure. I had one other slide after this before we go to the item okay. 13. Uh, we talked a lot about our AMI, advanced metering infrastructure. This is, uh, we installed about 26,300 meters uh, between December of 15 and May of 17. Uh, what you see here is a graph that shows our unaccounted for water. So back in, uh, you know, April of 2016, we were about 27% of unaccounted for water, which meant about for every four gallons we produced, we lost a gallon. Um, we installed that AMI and we gained five points. We've maintained that five point uh, pickup for the last 44 months. And here recently, due to some uh, leak repairs, we've actually gotten another six point decrease. So we're looking at about 11 point decrease of, so now we're around 14% <clears throat> unaccounted for water since December of 15. So this is another just big, big win for us uh, in getting this percent unaccounted for water down using our AMI. Darren, can I ask you a question? Is, yes, sir. I, I assume the capturing of that or the savings there is due to the new meters, not the AMI. Well, the, the new meters, yes. The new meters was gave us that accuracy. Uh, we probably could have picked up that accuracy, quite honestly, with uh, just installing new meters without the AMI. Right. The, the, this last six-point gr uh, drop here, though, towards the end, that really probably can be more attributed to AMI because we're finding leaks uh, with that system, and we've gone out and actually done a lot of repairing of the system. Okay. And did we not originally put AMI meters in the water reuse um, meters because they weren't there or? They didn't have a good cost benefit. Okay, yeah. They really didn't justify, warrant it. And now that we've we've got some additional savings through our program, we, we felt like for the, a lot of it's convenience, but a lot of it's safety, not having those guys out there in the median. Uh, we felt like it was time to replace those. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Darren, we have item number six from the consent agenda. This is the water resource recovery facility roof resources. Yes, sir. This is a, uh, a roof replacement. It's our main uh, administrative and laboratory building out at the water resource recovery facility. We have a 30 year old roof. Uh, we did take bids on February 3rd. Perry Roofing Company uh, provided the lowest qualified bid. Um, their cost of work is 71,400. We had budgeted uh, $100,000 for that roof replacement, so we're about 28,600 under under budget. Um, I assume this was pulled off of the uh, consent agenda for some uh, contractual uh, tune-up uh, before uh, before we put it on or after we put it on the consent agenda. So we would ask for your approval to award this to Perry uh, Roofing Company in the amount of $71,400. Questions? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris? 
Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Darren, all joking aside, um, I, I know we are mainly me, we, we joke about PowerPoint presentations and all those things, but to the average person who watches this or who is following this, a lot of the things that we see in our water resources department is way over the head of a council member and, and a mayor. We don't we don't know all of the chemicals that you guys are showing us. We just trust that what you're giving us is is accurate information. And I want to tell you, your team, your engineers, you know, Valerie, your people who are out in O&M, your people who are out every single day making taps, we could not be where we are as a city without active growth in our, our water department and our sewer department. Um, and y'all do a phenomenal job. <clears throat> we want to let y'all know to, to keep up the good work. And, you know, I think as a council, um, the information that we get, although sometimes very hard to understand, the way that you present it to us does makes it make it much easier to understand and be able to explain. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the trust that you have in us to make those management decisions so that we can be as efficient and effective as possible. So without you all giving us that trust, that confidence, we couldn't do it. So thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Darren. All right, we have um, want to make we have licensing. We have uh, a couple of beer permits that are in front of really just one beer permit. It's a special event. Is everything in order, Ms. Wright? It is. It's a fundraiser for the Discovery Center on May 15th and another on June 4th. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Um, under board and commission appointments, I should have been, uh, as we talked about the process of appointing people to the new uh, MED funds, that study committee um, that we voted on last week that Councilman Lance is going to chair. If, if you would, anyone who's going to apply, I think I've talked to several council members, if you'll have them go to the city website, click on board and commission appointments and fill out that application. That way we can make sure, you know, city residents and all the things that we need to go through to make sure that um, those, those people apply. So I should have said that last week. And, and Mayor, if, if we could, if we can get those by next Wednesday, we can talk about it at the workshop. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if we can get those over the next three or four days and then we'll uh, formalize those on on Wednesday um, and they should return them to city manager's office or it, it, what typically if they'll email them you know maybe as a council member if you want to have them scan them and email them to you directly and then we can forward those in or if you want to email them um, city manager. just see Tyndall at murfreesboro.tn.gov we can we can put those together <coughs> any statements that need to be paid no, sir. I have Three updates I want to give everyone under other business, if you don't mind. Um, one was the MED study committee. Two, um, we've had a lot of discussion on the airport, and uh, Chairman Waldron and I met with Dr. McPhee on Tuesday, and we came back and shared with uh, all of the staff. I had a really, really good meeting. I'm expecting, uh, after talking to Dr. McPhee again this morning, he's going to have us uh, a letter uh, outlining what we discussed and uh, the changes that we're going to be having uh, overall at the airport. Now, I think you're also going to see as a council uh, a recommendation come from the airport director on a new study that really is going to go over the airport for the next 10 or 15 years on operational items, uh, several different things. So. Lots of good things that couldn't have gone any better, and want to um, thank Dr. McPhee for for the time and also for um, a willing attitude that we sat down and, and worked on several different things. Last but not least, um, the MED Pension Commission met yesterday, and <coughs> there was a lot of items. You know, I think we've talked in executive session about some of the changes that we were going to need to make on the existing pension to correct that for items that needed to be fixed and so with that I think I got several phone calls over the last since Sunday and then got phone calls last night um, so I think there's one thing I was going to ask the council you know I think everything is always done better when we discuss these things publicly um, I think that was discussed you know in the in the meeting yesterday but you know there, there, there were some things that were were thrown out uh, that we're we're changing the pension of existing people who've been 
retired from MED for over 10 or 15 years. And, you know, I, I think I talked to Adam this morning or yesterday as well as Craig to make sure that we want in the the two people I talked to last night who are longtime MED employees that have retired, that there is no changes to anyone's um, pension um, that's out there right now. That's just not even on the table. The council's not discussing changing past retirees' pension. Um, but I, I do think, as looking at this, and I'm knowing that Finley is our um, Finley is our benefits or <clears throat> pension director or auditor, I should say, auditor and actuary, correct? There are actuary, actuary. actuary, not an auditor. On the MED pension. I think it would be good if, this, if the council uh, agrees. The pension commission voted to send uh, an item to the council for approval yesterday, correct, Craig? That's got to, the, the change that, that the, is being The updates fixed, to the plan. That's got to come, come to the council. I think at the same time, it would be good for us to discuss not only with our staff being there, I think it would be good, the former MED staff who managed the pension, I think the actuary who managed the pension, um, I think we should really get that data and let's talk about that publicly. I think we need to talk about how we got there or how we got to where we are. I think we need to talk about if there were mistakes that were made, we need to talk about that publicly on how those were made. And at the same time, I think we also need to discuss um, with the employees who are feeling a certain way on where the city is and what we can and can't do with the pension, I would rather have those employees in the room with the council so we all can talk about where we are, what we can and what we can't do as a council. And if there's decisions that we need to make, those are done publicly. I think any time you can do it with more transparency, the better. And in this case, um, I think that is warranted. I, I, I don't want anything to come out that makes it look like the city or staff is trying to be the heavy on hurting employees because I don't think that's the case with the council or the or our staff. And so we need to let's talk about that publicly. Is everyone okay with us doing that? And also, I think we sending an invite to Finley, and then there's also um, an auditor out of Brentwood who is auditing the MED. Um, pension, correct? I don't know if they're an auditor. There was a consultant. There was a consultant through which Finley operated. Okay. But I, I think anyone that had anything to do with the MED pension, we should have, we should invite. I mean, we don't have subpoena powers like Congress. It'd be cool if we did sometimes. Um, but I think anyone who had anything to do with that pension, including the general manager who was the CFO, Mr. Minot, um, Miss Williams, I think we need to be able to have them here to ask them questions. And uh, I think the one thing, Craig, that would be great to have just for the council and the general public to understand is in the deal as that was closed with Middle Tennessee Electric, let's have the deal points with the employees on what the employees were to receive when the transaction occurred. So that way we all can answer those que we, we can answer those questions and, and talk about that. Mayor, could we have, <clears throat> would it be reasonable to request that the pension committee members as well as the MED board members be present as well too? That way you've got a collective group. Yeah, I think so. I think anyone who had anything to, to do with managing <clears throat> it would be good to have them, them here. And again, we can invite them. We can't make them come. I'm sure Mr. Bradley, who serves on the MED commission, would gladly come. Uh, I don't remember who else served on that. That um, You remember, Melissa, who served on the MED there board? There was a, a lady that is now, I think she got appointed to the M Middle Tennessee Electric Board. Irene, Irene. Um, McDonald. Uh, and there was one other. Rick Harsty. I mean, you're talking about? I was talking about both the pension and the MED board, so yeah, you're talking Stone. about the former boards. Yes, ma'am. Right. <clears throat> I think we invite everyone. So if we do have questions to ask um, to the board and to the pension, uh, I think if you invite the former boards with the staff that's on the new boards and the former employees, that would catch the new people that yeah. way too. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good idea. I think the more, um, the more people that. You know, we can ask questions on 
where we are, I think that's the better for the council to be able to make those decisions. I don't know when we're, you know, when when that'll happen. I, I certainly am good with talking about it. I mean, there's certainly um, some of these things that we obviously are gonna have to be careful about, and I'm sure you guys will already deal with this. But you know, obviously, some of you know the executive session was, you know, also protected names and things like that. There were, you know, we don't want to be we don't want to have names listed out there, but because there were a few of those one-offs, if, if I remember right, that, you know, that were just some accounting mistake 15 years ago or something like that. That So we just make sure we protect against that. You know, I, I, as I'm sitting here thinking about it and kind of looking out here at this, um, at our room here, I recall a couple of meetings that we had, there were a whole lot of blue shirts. And that was at a time when we weren't socially distanced and all that. So that may be a little bit of a challenge as, as it relates to if there's going to be a lot of employee. How, Craig, how many people came yesterday? Uh, we filled this room. It was full. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess what I would ask is if we're going to do that, I want everybody listening because that just means there's less questions, less rumors, less whatever. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at here is if we can facilitate through technology or whatever, um, you know, other rooms, uh, other places where we pipe the, the video and audio in, I'm game for all that. You know, we don't want everybody standing in the hall. It's loud, it's, you know, it doesn't work very well, it seems like to me, but you know, I'm game for everybody because, you know, I, I agree, We this needs to get cleared up it needs to be uh the, the 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 book needs to be closed on it to so to speak um and so i agree i'm i'm good let's just try to work on the the, the it, technology piece please by march the 15th the i don't know how the social distancing policy is going to work but march 15th the mass mandate goes away correct yes that's true so we'll if we don't meet until after march 15th i mean we i think as council members we are all trying to social social distance but can we require you know in our meetings for how do we do that how can we accommodate um that many people well we can get a larger venue um i i don't know the answer to the, the social distancing and and such as that as a recommendation still um i don't it's, i guess i'm really part say. of the mandate but Sorry. we could we yeah. could yeah, we could look at technology. Um, we can look at different venues that are larger um, if we wanted to do maintain the social distancing. And I think, I mean, I, this is just my opinion, but I think it's important as we're talking about this. I, I like looking the employees in the eye as we're making these discussions and we're having these discussions. I think it is definitely more valuable for them to be here to listen to the discussion and not be listening to that through a computer screen if they want to come. Um, so maybe we can set up either this room or I don't know if we do this as a, is it just a special meeting solely for this topic and maybe do that at the, um, you know, if we do set that up at the airport, that is a little bigger than this room mm -hmm. or maybe not. I, I don't know, but I, I don't know if we'll be able to find a venue large enough to, well, we have Patterson, but yeah, that's very large. Yeah. That'd be, Perfect. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm i fine with that. It, it, my opinion, I, this needs to be televised. I, I, this needs to be a televised meeting that is not just recorded. I want everyone that's in social media world, that's these innuendos are, that are being thrown out, I want everyone to understand where we are with this situation and where the council is. So if we can have this at Patterson and it be televised, I'm, I'm for that. But I mean, I think it needs to be a televised meeting where everyone can can physically see what the council is discussing and the things that we've been discussing over the last many months on on getting to this this topic. I would rather it happen that way as opposed to innuendo and rumor going out about what we're talking about. I think every person should be able who's in that pension to, to watch that and see it. Let us uh, we'll talk to the communication guys. They they don't mind going on the road. They like to get out of their little rooms back there uh, sure. so if we can set that up we can do it uh, maybe at the Patterson Auditorium would okay, certainly perfect. be large enough yeah all right good idea all right we'll get that um, let me make sure I did not miss anything we had airport pension we've already talked about the MED study committee and 
That's it. Council members, do y'all have any other business? I do. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, before I go into this, I want to make sure I preface this by what I'm going to say doesn't have any condemnation or anything on any other city, city employees, city government officials, or anything like that. Uh, for years uh, around town, you've heard the saying of, hey, we need a full-time mayor. You got one, and you're not even paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best deal for the taxpayer the ever. The taxpayer ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I've kind of looked at the process. I've talked to Mr. Tucker multiple times about this, and uh, the, the process is very similar to the MED money issue. Uh, you have to get a state rep to sponsor it. Uh, there's two choices. You go to a referendum vote of 51% or have 66% uh, of the council vote in yay. Uh, but I, I feel this is a, a will of the people. If we put it to a referendum, if the people want it, they're going to vote for it. If the people don't want it, they're not going to vote for it. It's a very easy thing. Uh, if we put it on a referendum next year and started it in 26, I would give Mayor McFarland a chance to run for re-election, and it gives the pure right of the people of what they would like in their government. Like I said, this is not a, a condemnation of anything Ms., uh, Mr. Tyndall's done or anything like that. I just want the people to get what they want. So how about we will, um, if we can, put this on a what would be good put it on a workshop item let's talk through it as a council maybe um, between now and then council members study on strong mayor uh, forms of government um, and then our, our current government and then chat or uh, Adam you could give us you know sort of work through our charter and give us information on what the charter says I, I think it up for the discussion could I just uh, and I'll mention something as far as the workshop goes I think we had talked uh, month or so ago three weeks ago um you know kind of the different yeah retreat versus workshop some and you know that occurs to me as maybe a good retreat item it could be a good workshop shop item too for that matter i'm not necessarily getting but i think we do have enough things like this that uh you know i i think in my mind last time we brought up a retreat one of the things that we talked about was kind of what you know was uh, the the med pension there's still kind of some looming decisions we need to just sort of say and close the book right and so um i would like to make sure we're all in agreement or whatever if you know whoever that how, however that needs to be coordinated there you know and, and i my preference on the retreat idea it, this this can be workshop if sure. you know if that's the best way to do it I, I mean, i'm good with whatever but um from a from a retreat standpoint this time I'm my my vote would be we don't need a mediator we, we you know we got so, we got five issues let's say you know that we just know we need to really put a little bit of time and sit around a, a table and and kind of you know throw stuff at each other <laughs> <laughs> I didn't throw anything but <laughs> you know something like that to I mean I'm talking you know day and a half I, I'll do a day and a half every month for the next three months if we need to you know whatever i, I so i just I, i'm you know on i'm kind of on a mission to get some stuff are you okay with a retreat that um even if we book that i mean here in the council chambers that we just are you wanting to, to I don't know, you know i i think there was something helpful about being you know even we were just 10 miles down the road that kind of was nice to get and you know have some have some space to sit down and it was kind of I don't know honestly man it sounds a little kooky but it was a little warmer you know i mean to be able to just sit there and really have some dialogue and that sort of thing and i think it's capable you know we're capable of having dialogue in here but those big old lights don't really help and yeah. us not looking at each other doesn't really help for that to me I, why don't we do this um if, if everyone's agreeable to this you know this next month is going to be tough to do something because we have spring or uh, spring breaks and all kinds of things coming up but you know, typically between April and June, it's a slower period for us because we're not necessarily, we're dealing with our budget, um, but which would also be a good thing maybe to discuss at a retreat, but somewhere between April mm -hmm. and let's just say July, why don't Craig, your staff send to you items and points of discussion that they need direction on you know we had a good discussion on planning the other day and that is continually evolving but council members send to craig your ideas of topics that you want to discuss and then let's put those together in a format to see if it needs to be 
you know, a two day retreat, if it needs to be something that we need to do over the course of six months. And then what may would be good on that is as you get that list together. So say over the next two weeks, everyone send Craig their list. You want to talk, Craig, you'll compile that list together and bring back to us and we'll categorize and put in our top five, what we think are the most, the, the top five priorities we want to discuss. And then the council can rank those. And that'll be our first, our first session to talk about you know these four items so in in sean's recommendation of a full-time mayor you know that may fall at five on the list compared to water sewer planning or whatever but the council can determine what those topics are and then we'll knock them off one at a time i mean i, I think we haven't done that in almost two years now before that it was four or five years that we did a retreat out at barfield um mm -hmm. before that so is everyone okay and we'll commit to sending that list to Craig and that'll give us the, the topics that we'll start discussing and then your staff will send to you mm -hmm. topics that you want us to start discussing. Right, I, I think realistically, because when we go in a budget process, you know, it, it appears, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of st staff time. So my suggestion would probably be more towards the June timeframe so we can get past budget um, and the work that we need to do to get in there about mid-may we'll have most things nailed down i think okay. uh, so but before that that's what we're going to be focusing on probably for the next six weeks sean is that okay with you if we discuss that at the yeah that's fine what are y'all's thoughts on adam putting a, a resolution together where we can at least look at it and see what we're studying yeah i'm fine with me i'm fine with looking at the resolution i, I was interested you know kind of what some comments you made with us kind of getting a little more educated on the the strong former government you know it'd be interesting to me i mean i kind of think i you know publicly would say i, I kind of I, mean, I obviously know what it is and the difference between what we do here and what a what a full-time mayor or a strong mayor or former government looks like but i certainly don't know all the little ins and outs and the and the uh, little underlying what i'm missing you know the unknown unknowns about it that I, i'd like to go try to look at so i'd have some time for that but i'm certainly willing to look at a resolution in the meantime i you know yeah i'm fine with it yeah i mean you know if i, I I'm, I'm fine with him preparing we can i, I think we're all going to have to study i couldn't i mean i know from the county standpoint what that strong mayor government does but i i couldn't tell you a municipal that has a strong strong mayor form of government so and, a, and an administrator so yeah, I think that's a, that's a good idea. All right. All right. Any other business? All right. Seeing none. Good stuff. Stand adjourned.